Hi, this is the continuation of a series of videos designed to give individuals information that they can use to prepare for a visit to a physician's office. The videos are designed to help ensure that the individual can ask appropriate questions of the physician and to increase the likelihood that quality care is delivered. Fatigue or being tired is a common complaint. Fatigue can be a symptom of serious disorders. But anxiety and stress are the cause of over half of patients' complaints of fatigue. The physician must consider the serious disorders before settling on anxiety or stress as being the final diagnosis. The physician will first look to rule out the following causes. Depression, viral or post-viral infections, and sleep disorders. Then the physician will move on to serious disorders that must not be missed such as cancer, chronic infections such as hepatitis, tuberculosis, or endocarditis, anemia, congestive heart failure, and other cardiovascular related disorders, such as high blood pressure. High blood pressure can make you tired. Renal failure, endocrine disorders such as thyroid problems, Cushing's disease, and Addison's disease, neuromuscular disorders, HIV, and medication, related causes of fatigue, either prescription or non-prescription. The history. The history will be critical in the diagnosis. The physician will be interested in defining the patient's characteristics of the fatigue. The patient's sleep pattern, any weight changes, the patient's sexual activity, if the patient has any suicidal ideations, if the patient is self-medicating, and any symptoms of depression, the patient's work history, dietary habits, and menstrual history. The physical. The physician will start with a general physical exam and then hone in on specific areas as dictated by the history and general physical exam findings. Investigative tests. The range of investigative tests that a physician can use to help with the diagnosis is extensive. The physician will have to select the appropriate tests out of the many available. The physician might start with the following. Hemoglobin level, a full blood count, liver function testing, renal function testing, serum electrolytes, blood sugar level, urine analysis and culture, serum iron and ferritin levels, thyroid function tests, tests for autoimmune disorders, and HIV screening. The results of these tests will allow the physician to further explore additional testing selections. The physician will want to rule out possible cancers such as breast, colon, cervical, endometrial, lung, and prostate. Depending upon the age of the female patient, a mammogram might be ordered. Colon cancer screening can be done either with a sensitive test that looks for signs of cancer in a person's stool, or with colonoscopy, which looks at the colon and rectum. Cervical cancer can be tested with a pap smear. Endometrial cancer, if considered, warrants a referral to a gynecologist who will order imaging studies and obtain a tissue biopsy of the uterus. A CA-125 blood test may also be ordered, but it is expensive and usually more beneficial for monitoring how treatment is progressing. CA-125 is a substance released into the bloodstream by many, but not all, endometrial and ovarian cancers. If lung cancer is considered as a possible diagnosis, the physician will order a low-dose CT scan. There is a difference between a low-dose CT scan and a traditional x-ray when screening for lung cancer. The type of low-dose CT scan that is recommended for a lung cancer screening is a form of CT scan known as a low-dose spiral or helical CT scan. The low-dose spiral CT scan continuously rotates in a spiral motion and takes several three-dimensional x-rays of the lungs. These x-rays are very detailed and can show early-stage lung cancers that may be too small to be detected by a traditional x-ray. 
If prostate cancer is a possible diagnosis, the physician will order initially a PSA blood test with or without a rectal exam. Depending upon the results, the physician may then order a biopsy of the prostate or an MRI of the prostate. As fatigue is a symptom of illness, the physician has his or her work cut out for her or he to determine if there is any underlying illness that is responsible. We'll continue our discussion of fatigue on the next video. I hope this helps. Have a good day.